While the owner was away, the thief struck was perhaps the most appropriate description of last week's demolition of Powa shopping complex in the popular Ikeja computer village here in Lagos. A large percentage of shop owners in the facility were away at the time celebrating Christmas and New Year. But those behind the demolition say it was all part of a due process physical restructuring of the area in question. What was right and who is wrong? Well, as we search for greater clarity, we're now being joined by Nuruddin Yusuf, who is a lawyer to the traders affected by the surprise demolition. Uh, good day and welcome to News Desk. Good to have you with us. Thank you. Very, thank you for having me. Very good, Nuruddin. So walk us through the controversy concerning the demolition by police of poor shopping complex. How did this begin? OK, uh, sometime around July, I think on 12th of July, our clients were called to a meeting at uh, the police, uh, uh, police commandant dining hall, and they were intimidated with the fact that there are proposals from a developer that they want to develop the property. So they opened conversations, and from then till around October, they had nothing but saw a letter uh, which was circulating in the market that there were going to be a development by a, a new contractor called Achieving Greatest Limited. So in October, swiftly, uh, the the proposal was premised on the fact that the building is defaced, is becoming deteriorating, and it's going to collapse anytime soon. So our client swiftly uh, conducted what we call integrity test by legal state material lab uh, testing. And the test came out to say that the building is strong enough to stand for the next 100 years. So that they had in their, in, in their covers to say to prove that the propositions by developer is not what is really obtainable. So from that uh, time, till around 2nd of December, nobody spoke to them until 2nd of December on a Saturday, when policemen came to say that they were going to bring that place down in seven days. So when they brought that information to us, we quickly approached the court, the High Court of Lagos, on 6th of December, and we, we filed an action before the court stating that while we comply with the pre-action protocol procedure in Lagos, because the, uh, going to court in Lagos requires that you go through a process called pre-action protocol. So we said, but we now approach the court to say, while we comply with the 6 to 30 days notice that we're supposed to send to the person that wants to sue, so the court should prevent all parties from taking action on that property. The court uh, on 18th of December, uh, Honorable Justice uh, L.B. Lawala Kapo grant an order stating that he has granted the order of preemptive remedy and we should return back to court on 24th of January. The court uh, ordered that we should serve the order that was made by the court on the proposed defendant and the matter and uh, go through the process within seven days, which means that instead of using the first 30 to inform them, second 30 to see proposal settlement, the court said we should do everything within seven days. So we did serve that pre-action protocol, we call it memorandum of claim, attaching all our documents and uh, stating a summary of our case and remedies that we ought to get from court. So when we serve that on the, on the uh, proposed defendant, which were achieving greatness, Richmond Construction, the Commissioner of Police, President of POA, which is the wife of the Inspector General of Police, the National Market Leader of POA. We served on Attorney General of Lagos. We served on Lagos uh, Commissioner for Physical Planning in Lagos. Uh, sorry, Commission, uh, Minister of Physical Planning in Lagos. We served on uh, uh, LAPSCA, that's Lagos Building Control Agency, and the Attorney General of Lagos. So after we served those processes, on 28th of December, we just saw that a notice was pasted on that property to say that that building is going to be brought down in 24 hours. So because of the fact that there was no court to run to, or there was nobody to run to, so we staged a protest to the office of uh, the governor. Unfortunately, there's a barricade before you get to the office of the governor where you see the House of Assembly for. So at the House of Assembly, we were attended to by three members of the House stating that we should put up a petition and something was going to be done on, on that issue. So that is what we, we did. Unfortunately, on Saturday, that will be 30th of December, around 12.38 a.m. I was surprised to receive calls uh, from my client by mobile policemen numbering about 300. Came and uh, they, they came in with uh, big uh, machines, possibly uh, the machines to bring down the property. But they did not just bring down the property, they were opening, unlocking their shops, forcibly unlocking their shops and looting their properties before the demolition started. So before we knew what uh, could happen, in the morning on, on 31st of December, we saw the building down. A building properly built, 
standing on its feet. So now, according to your story, it seems there are two issues here. Of course, we have contempt of court, and then we have uh, abuse of the rule of law. Yes. So as the lawyer now, what are you doing to get justice for your clients? OK. Uh, it is clear that in Lagos State, there is what we call Lagos uh, ban. Uh, I may not get that right, but development, there's a law. And the law has so many mechanisms within which you can bring down a property. I think in Section 71, precisely, notices were supposed to be served when Lapska discovered that the building is distressed. So what we are doing is that we're going to back to the court on 24th of January to file the appropriate action to make sure that the IG of police is charged for contempt. Because it is not just that uh, uh, he ride a rope truck on the law of Nigeria, he did contemptuously overreach a court of competent jurisdiction that has ordered that all actions should be stayed pending the time that will come back to the court. Very good. Um, now that the demolition has happened, you know, uh, you know, we're still trying to get uh, some closure regarding that. Uh, earlier, the police public relations officer, Mr. Olumi Iwa Adijobi, said in a statement uh, on Saturday that, uh, look, uh, there was need for reconstruction and, of course, uh, the environmental hazard. He also mentioned stuff like that, although you've refuted that regarding proper test uh, done on that. but. You know, this has happened, and uh, what they're saying is that they're going to rebuild on that same plot. So, when that happens, if and when that happens, are you making, you know, efforts to include your clients uh, regarding, uh, you know, compensation in this regard? Those were the part of the conversations that we were expecting that as stakeholders in the property. But are we, you engaging them on that? We, You're we, expecting we, that, but are you engaging them on we've that? We've not been engaged as we speak up till date, mm -hmm. except for the statement from uh, the uh, PPR of police. There is no engagement as we, up till this moment that I speak. Nobody's engaging our clients. And our clients are tenants of people who are allottees of the property. The property, so to say, is not owned by the police. The police, yes, have the property, but allocated to some people. Those people in return now give to our client as tenants and they're paying rent. Even if uh, you are, even if someone is a squatter in a property, the tenancy law of Lagos requires that you serve the person in seven days' notice to inform him that even if, as a squatter, I want to use my property. This, in this case, our pro clients are not. They are not strayers. They are not uh, squatters. They are lawful tenants. And some of them have their rent running up to 2029 that they have paid to their respect. So the, the, the other dark area is that none of their landlord has told them that they are revoking their right to tenancy or they are revoking their right to the property or they want to redevelop. So this story is just flying all around. And I think it is a result of some, we call them uh, profiteer developers who have made a presentation to supposedly the wife of the IG, who is the president of POA. But we are expecting that let us invite our clients to, the, to discuss the modalities. We are not refusing. Our client is not saying that you should not, because they are not the owner of the property. But what we are saying is, let us have a proper engagement as stakeholders in the property. That is because some, that property that uh, the poor market has, has it is, our client's money, most of them, built the property. What their landlady or landlord, as the case may be had, were just allocation. So in these harsh economic times, you know, one can only imagine what the traders are going through, you know, and with the state governments denying any involvement in what happened, what urgent remedies would you say are available at this time, you know, to your clients? Are there plans to resettle them? You know, what, what, what has um, those who demolished the building, what have they said, you know, regarding these people who you say paid rent and their rents have not expired? Uh, as I speak, there is, there is no engagement up to date, and there has not been any form of engagement as we speak. But what we hope to do is that, one, enforce our client right to see that all those, the police should investigate the looting. People who had properties worth two million are in these shops, and we're talking about one, more than 1,000 traders. So let the police, IG of police, even if you had other demolition against the order of court, let him investigate the looting. There, were, there was looting, there was a broad daylight stealing of our crime. So that is the first uh, angle to this conversation. Then the next angle would now be that even if the developer is coming on board, is he, in, is he interested in absorbing our client to see, looking at the level of destruction that has caused to their livelihood? This has all of the things that we're looking at. And I think the police cannot absorb themselves from all these issues on the table. So we need to have a conversation 
around this issue to see how our client can be properly come because there is remedy for them under the law and we are ready to go the full hog of, uh, of the law. It may take some time, but we would make sure that our client's right is not just infringed, they are not just being taken for granted. I like your optimism and uh, hopefully you get a closure on this case. Uh, Nuruddin Yusuf, legal practitioner, would like to thank you for discussing the controversy over the demolition of the police, by the police rather, of poor shopping complex in Computer Village. Thanks. It's good to have you with us. Thank you very much.